This is from Newsweek magazine. A, a new report highlights the hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths in the United States under the, the, the former so-called leader of this country, the orange son of a bitch. And this report noted that some 40% of COVID-19 pandemic deaths in 2020 would have been averted if the government of the orange bastard had taken just the just the simplest steps to contain this virus anyway the report was published yesterday or today yeah today thursday in the lancet it explains that even before the pandemic the united states saw 461,000 unnecessary deaths in 2018 when compared to the death rates in other G7 nations, which are Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom. Comparing the U.S. COVID-19 mortality rate to this peer group, the U.S. would have seen 40% fewer deaths in 2020 if our mortality rate was comparable to other so-called G7 nations. The report explains this, quote, the global COVID-19 pandemic has had a disproportionate effect on the United States with more than 26 million diagnosed cases and over 450,000 deaths as of early February, about 40% of which could have been averted had the U.S. death rate mirrored the weighted average of the other G7 nations. Many of the cases and deaths were avoidable. Instead of galvanizing the U.S. populace to fight the pandemic, President Trump publicly dismissed its threat, despite privately acknowledging it, which discouraged action as infection spread and eschewed international cooperation, end quote. We know this, don't we? Now, it, 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 the, the Newsweek piece says that it's obvious that Trump is responsible for his filthy administration's actions in the past four years. The authors of this report point out that many problems here in the U.S. date back decades due to policies promoted by Republican leaders. It points out that while people are living longer and healthier, in peer nations, he said, this, this other G7, if we were going to have a standard, life expectancy in the U.S. is on the decline. Can you fucking believe this? I mentioned this, I think, about a year and a half ago when I first saw this. The report points to a range of ne negative factors in the U.S., such as climate change, deregulation, soaring health care costs, lack of health insurance, economic inequality, and racism under Trump an additional two and a half million people became uninsured on top of the 28 million Americans who were already uninsured when he came into office and that 2.3 million included 726,000 children and furthermore the mortality gap between white and black Americans has grown by 50% during the pandemic, while the life expectancy of Latin Americans has declined by three and a half years. The report says this, quote, Trump exploited low and middle income white people's anger over their deteriorating life prospects to mobilize racial animus and xenophobia and enlist their support for policies that benefit high-income people and corporations and that threaten health. So just like Ammon Bundy used this, this pandemic 
to to ride his his, his group into American fascism hanging it on on some bullshit claim that being told to wash your hands and wear a mask was taking away your freedom. So has Trump used this pandemic to to mobilize this this racial horrible divide in this country and and get the support for his high income peer group Trumps and corporations, and to threaten public health. I mean, this is just fucking madness. We may be rid of Trump, but he's not gone. This son of a bitch ceded the legislative branch of government and the bureaucracy in so many instances, the American judiciary system with incipient crypto-Nazis who, who are there, they're there now. Newsweek goes on, his signature legislative achievement, a trillion dollar tax cut for corporations and high income individuals, opened a budget hole that Trump used to justify cutting food subsidies and health care and environmental enforcement. Now, Trump's not the first fucking Republican to do that. But Trump turned it into sport. The authors of this report are part of what's called the Lancet Commission and include prominent doctors and researchers. Dr. Steffi Woolhandler, one of the authors who works as primary care physician and as a distinguished professor of public health and health policy at City University of New York School of Public Health at Hunter College, she told Newsweek that President Joe Biden has, quote, moved swiftly, end quote, to address some of the worst of Trump's policies. But she added that the new administration, the Biden administration, has got to do more. This is what she said in an email to uh, Newsweek, quote, reversing Americans' decades of lagging health will require much larger reforms, including Medicare for all, Reparations to compensate Native and Black Americans for wealth and labor confiscated from them. Passage of the Green New Deal. Added federal support for nutrition, housing, education, and other programs that are essential for good health. These social needs should be funded by reductions in defense spending and increased taxes on the wealthy. All right, now that last two or three sentences... From Dr. Steffi Woolhandler. Puts it pretty much totally in focus. Larger reforms are needed, including Medicare for all, reparations to compensate Native and Black Americans for health and labor taken from them. Also needed passage of the Green New Deal. Added federal support for nutrition because how many people in this country, old people and children, are going hungry? Federal support for housing, education, programs that are essential for good health. And how to pay for it, reductions in defense spending. We spend close to a trillion dollars a year, a year, a fucking year on weapons of mass destruction and increase taxes on the wealthy. Dr. Woolhandler noted that, quote, Trump's stoking of racism and his dropping of regulations on polluters have probably had the gravest short-term effects, end quote. And then Dr. Mary Bassett, a commission member and director of the XFB Center, for Health and Human Rights at Harvard University added in a press release that this report, quote, highlights how racial disparities in health have grown in the last four years, especially as COVID-19 has taken its grim and unequal toll in black, Latino, and indigenous people populations. And Dr. Bassett added that, quote, 
The disastrous, bungled response to the pandemic made clear how existing, long-standing racial inequities simply have not been addressed. It's time to stop saying these preventable gaps cannot be eliminated. So, so, so there you have it. This is why when I look ahead <laughs> as I try to point out metaphorically at the beginning of this podcast, you know, and I look ahead now and look for that opening at the end of the road, that opening where justice is available for all of us. I don't see it anymore. When, when I look ahead and, and, and try to see positive, clearly definable results from all the work that all the people have done over all the decades to try, to struggle, to bring about an equitable opportunity for everybody, which means justice. Justice. I, I can't see for the fog and, and the shadows. What I do see moving in that fog, though, are these shadows, and they scare the hell out of me. These shadows of people who, I guess they're people, who appear to be moving this way and that way. And I know they're a threat to me, and I know they're a threat to you. And I know they're a threat to my children and grandchildren and yours and to the entire country. And I see those shadows moving down there where the end of the path should be, but isn't. And it, uh, it's very frightening. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.